Hi there guys, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at back defense. The ability to escape the back position or when you're being attacked from the back. Now there are a few things to understand. Once your back is taken, you first have to understand what opportunities the opponent has to attack you with. So if you haven't been familiar with that position, go back and watch the previous video to clear yourself up with the submission attacks from the back. Okay, back defense guys, let's get right into it. Okay guys, first thing to understand, when your back is taken, okay? Traditionally, you've got the hooks that connects the opponent's hips to yours and the opponent's seat belt that keeps the torso connected to our back. This makes it very difficult for us to shape them. As we know, with the seat belt, the opponent's gonna be looking for the RNC choke. So, submission defense, number one. To not be vulnerable to the rear naked choke, we've gotta prep our body. Easy way to do this, the shoulder on the overhook arm, I take it and I put it up towards the ceiling, I shrug my shoulder up, and my arm on the opposite end, I chomp down. So I create an angle that is not conducive to an easy RNC from the opponent. The next thing I wanna do is fight the hands. Now, traditionally guys would take their hands and cup over a paddle um, defense on the forearm. Now this is okay up until a point. This will not suffice for a long period of time against a high level opponent. It's just not strong enough. What we want to get to ideally is a C cup grip where we have a baseball bat grip on the opponent's wrist. My thumbs and my fingers close around the wrist of the opponent's choking arm, the top arm. This defense is far more acceptable than going paddle grip. There are times when you can't get the C grip, you're going to have to paddle your way in until you get the C. That's fine, but don't rely solely on pulling on the opponent's forearm. Remember guys, the higher up towards the forearm you get, the less effective this grip becomes. The closer I am to his wrist, to the end of the lever, the more control I have off his arm. So get that C cup nice and tight over the opponent's wrist to make that RNC just a little bit more difficult to acquire. Another way you can look to catch the opponent's arms, specifically they haven't connected their hands yet. So someone's hands, are not accessible and they're behind your field of vision, the last thing you ever want to do is try to reach or look to grab their hand. They've got a better field of view than you do. By doing that, they can time you and they can attack you far more effectively than you can reach and grab the hand. So an easy way to prep yourself here is to keep your hands crossed around your neck. So as the arms are presented into the equation, you can thereafter look to secure and begin whatever escape it is you were looking for. Okay, so the X block, also an effective way, a preliminary measurement until you've got contact on an actual limb that you're gonna to look to escape with. Okay, another form of defense, some guys are called praying hands, putting their hands on either end, hands together, and cupping it close to their ear on the side of the overhook arm to keep that space open between the neck and the forearm and thereafter be able to get an easier grip on the arm that's attacking our neck. So you've got first prize C cup, which all things lead to. You've got X, or you've got the praying hands that will help you get to the particular arm or limb. Okay, basic defenses against the RNC. Now, positional defense, guys. We know if our hips are jammed and his back's connected to my torso, I'm in real trouble. So how do we escape this particular process or get over the particular problem of control? We need to work backwards. Take away the hip control that he has and dislodge our back from his chest. If I take the angle and I shift it where I'm no longer flush with his chest, it makes it far harder for him to attack. I can do this by turning in or by pushing up or by sliding down. But be careful because some of these options do lead into other possible attacks for the opponent like triangles and arm bars. First we're going to understand basic defense from the overhook position. Traditionally guys, back is an attack from a seating position. It is often explained from this position because it's easy to kind of reference and see what's going on. But in the real world, if someone's attacking your back, it's going to be either on his right shoulder down, the overhook arm, or on the underhook arm down. Shift down towards the bubble. Now, on the overhook position, right, he's got his arm over the top of my shoulder, he's got an underhook, and he's got traditional hooks in place. I'm in real trouble here because this arm is now primed to attack my neck for the RNC. 
Okay, rules still apply guys. We want to get that shoulder offset, elbow down, shoulder high. We want to look to immediately find that particular C group low on the wrist. Now there's a few ways to kill the cat from this position. The goal is to take his arm and bring it around my hip, here. Okay, that's the broad spectrum idea. However, not as easy as to just spread the arm across because sometimes it's bigger and stronger and tighter and you're not always able to do that. That's where my body position comes into play. Body position is key to defense, guys. So from here, once I've shifted my shoulders and my elbow, I want to shift my hips. I don't want to have a square presentation to his chest. So what I'm going to do is take my hips and turn them. So this gives him now a harder angle to deal with on that bottom hook. Remember what controls us guys is this bottom hook. If we can kill this bottom hook, we've taken away most of his back control. Okay, with well, that being said as well, it also makes it easier for me to look towards him. When I look towards him, my back begins to slide off his chest. And in doing so, it makes it harder for him to finish the submission. Now the threading of the hand works in conjunction with the movement of my body. The hand can be threaded at any point that you find it easiest to do so. If it's a right away when the back is taken, or with a really tight guy, it's later on, once you've actually been able to make more space, you can simply take the hand and pull it over, and then secure on the tricep so you can't get it free again. Or, if it's really strong, you're going to move your butt down and get your head into his armpit. Now my head's on the floor, and it's pinned under his arm. There is no way he's finishing me here. Thereafter, getting the arm across is far easier. That required me moving my body around the arm as opposed to threading the arm around my hip. Once I've got this control, the escape continues. My hip is free, right? I have two options. I can escape all the way out, shimmy my bum through, and get into a top side control position. Note how I control this arm the whole way through. Otherwise, he'll just scrabble and get to his knees if I don't have this control. So I must keep the control. I can even superimpose by taking a C cup on his elbow. I push off the floor, I look towards him, I switch my hips and I get on top. Ooh. And doing so, we get the top side control position. The second option from there is to simply go back into a top close guard position. So I've discovered, okay, I'm not going to have that opportunity to be able to go all the way into the side control. I get my space, I shimmy my hips, boom, I clear the arm. I can't get all the way, he's going to follow me through. So what I'm going to do is simply switch my hips between his legs, boom, and take the top position, which is far better than having my back taken. Okay guys, now basic defense from an underhook position on the back. Now we recall in the previous video where we talk about attacking from the back, falling to the underhook side presents more submission opportunities than the overhook position. When we are now going to be the one on the defensive position being attacked, we know the point of control for the opponent is to keep his head between the floor and my head. Here he's in control because his head is between the floor and mine. Okay, so there's a few ways to kill the cat from here. The first way, once again, is to get that offset. Heavy on that elbow, high on the shoulder, look for the C cup. You could swim the hand, shift your body weight, and get underneath the opponent's tricep and then run him and force him to the overhook position. Ooh. Switch, turn, and get on top. So you look, once again, for a C cup opportunity, third the hand, push him across, separate, create a V between your body and his, then thereafter get the escape. Hopefully not get choked. Put back into the back position. Okay, so my man decided, boom, he's going to the underhook side. He gets me down. Oh, first thing I go, C cup, thread, keep it heavy, run my legs, push him all the way over so that I now force him into the overhook position. Now, I forced him into the overhook position once again. Keep control of the hand, switch my hips, create a V, very important. Take my head, look towards him, and move my back away. Now the likelihood of him attacking my neck from here, zero to none. I can also take this elbow and wedge it between his body and mine, switch my hips, get into the top position, or push over the legs, go to side control, and then take the top, depending on what I find is most practical in the moment. Alternatively, on the underhook side, I can look to beat his head on the floor. So I can look to take my head and drive it between the floor 
and his head. So I can do this. Boom. Now once I've got to this position, I can keep a C cup on that top hand. I can turn my hips. Boom. And I can begin to create space. Once again, between my back and his chest, I can fight the hand, break the connection, and then either move my hips out or control the head, swim back in top position. Now be careful with this. When you are here, if he lets go, he can win the scramble because I've got the forehand, not the near hand in check. So an alternative, if you feel you're losing the scramble, as he's getting on top, you could always go and look to catch a half guard position. Again, half guard bottom, I'll take that over back any day. Sometimes you're going to know when to cut your losses and look to get into a position that's less dangerous than the one you're coming from. Underhook side, look for the defense, right? Solid C cup, elbow and shoulder in the right position, one low, one high, beat the head on the floor. Turn in, move my waist, get my head off center. From here, keep control of that forehand, spin in, get to my knees, get to the top. In the back position, guys, you can also look for opportunities of escape by shifting your body position either very high towards his head or shoving your weight all the way down. So some guys will look to pin the opponent and drive their body weight right over the opponent's body. They'll pin and they'll walk all the way up to look to kill the opponent's ability to attack and then look to offset their head and look for an escape. So someone's going very high will create possibilities of attack. Second, you can also go very low and look to shimmy out the bottom. However, be careful. When you do go very low, you give up opportunities to be attacked on the net by triangle or by armbar. So some, some individuals, when they're being attacked, they'll shimmy their way down. Bring it low, bring it low, bring it low. And then from here, look to make their way to the top position. So either go, either go high, either go low, and then from there look to escape. Most effective and efficient way, number one, offset the shoulder and the elbow, look to get the C cup grip. They often look to thread, whether it be by completely manipulating the hand over your head or by manipulating your body in conjunction with the guy's arm. Shimming down, getting your head in the pocket, and then escaping. Once you come off and you've broken that V, the connection of your back and his chest needs to break, the hip position needs to rotate so the hooks are no longer effective. You can then decide whether you're going to a top side control or you're cutting your losses and you're taking what you can get, which is the top position either in the guy's guard or in his half guard, and then work your way from there. Remember guys, defense from the back works best when initiated as soon as the opponent has begun to attack your back. Don't wait for him to lock in the position before you get out. C cup is the king. Paddle will only get you so far. The X grip will allow you to snag arms effectively when you can't see them, or praying hands will protect a space to which the overhook is attacking on. Guys, these are basic defensive frameworks and ideas to defend back attacks, specifically the RNC, and getting out of the overhook and the underhook back positions. In the next video, we're gonna cover how to get out of a deeper body triangle, how to escape the body triangle, as well as how to not get caught in arm bars from the back and how to kill or get out of rear naked chokes when the arm is about to come behind your head. Okay, guys, until the next video, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.